All right, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel, guys. It is time for another review. So say hello to Ren, Stimpy, Powder Toast Man, Log, and TV. And let's get started right here on the Knives Fast channel. If you're not subscribed, uh, please check it out, guys. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and stick around for lots of fun. And uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up and all that stuff. Comment, you know, whatever. So... Here you go. This is a review of a knife that comes uh, to me by way of my buddy Justin over at White Mountain Knives. And, you know, I just realized I didn't put a White Mountain sticker out there. So we're going to remedy that. There you go. Uh, Justin is the man. He allows me. You guys get I'm an affiliate over there. So you guys get a 10 percent uh, discount by using the code Knives Fast. I don't really get, uh, you know, anything back from that. But Justin allows me to check out knives all the time. Uh, and uh, review them and send them back to him. And that is huge for a channel like this to keep content flowing. So Justin, thank you so much. And you guys make sure to use that code KNIVESFAST to get your 10% off, please. Uh, very, very much. So this is the Artisan Cutlery. Um, and let's see, all you're going to get from Artisan is usually the model number. There you go. Uh, this is the Artisan Cutlery Andromeda, which is a awesome Ray Laconico design. Now, the first thing you have to do, let me close it, upon looking at this knife is get a good look at that crazy milling. Now, you guys know my um, Arian, uh, Ar Ar Arion, whatever it is, it has um, that kind of milling as well. This one has it on both sides of the titanium, and it is gorgeous. This is beautiful micro milling, and it provides wonderful grip as you can see listen very very nice um it is contoured on the scales it's it's not a huge contour it's fairly slight but it is contoured chamfered off on those edges really nicely you have a uh, titanium pocket clip with about come on get it up here there you go uh with about that much sticking out of the pocket it is um I am fairly certain it is right side only and tip up. Uh, it sure doesn't look like there's a provision here to flip it over, but maybe. Uh, there is a uh, lanyard, a hidden lanyard post uh, with, with a hole in it there. Uh, you do have uh, back uh, back barrel spacers rather than back a uh, hole back spacer. Uh, let's see inside. There is really no milling to speak of on the inside. Uh, but it doesn't really need it. This guy is lightweight. Now, let me just, let me go to some overarching statement for a moment. This is a phenomenal knife. This is a very CEO ergonomically approved knife. This is a great action knife and a phenomenal, large, beautiful cutter with a beautiful blade with one flaw. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But to start it off, these are currently available. Whoop. Actually, I take that back. This particular one is not currently available at White Mountain Knives, but I bet they will have more coming. When it was available, they were right at $200. And again, with White Mountain, you can get 10% off. There are two micarta versions. There's a black micarta version uh, still with the same blade steel, which these are S35. Um, black micarta, same blade steel, and they are 130 each. Um, and there is a satin version and a black bladed version. Um, and those two are available at White Mountain Knives. And again, I, I bet you you'll see this titanium one come back into stock. Let me wipe that blade just a little bit because it's too pretty to have fingerprints on it. But it is a beautiful satin finish, as you can see. And just this gorgeous, gorgeous drop point uh, with this wonderful swedge, a thumb ramp here, um, and it is a button lock, which we will talk about in a moment. Uh, you got these great thumb studs that you can access this way, and I am able to middle finger flick that thumb stud on the other side very easily. You have plenty of room, and it's even room because it's not a liner lock, so you don't have extra access on one side than the other. Uh, the pivot screw does stand proud just a little. These screws actually also, because of the, the contouring, they also stand proud. So you can see there, they stick up 
a little bit. Now, they're rounded, so it doesn't really bother me. Now, you've got this narrowed down handle with this terrific end cap here. So when I'm in a four-finger grip back here, I am locked in. But I'm not locked in in such a way that it is annoying. It's nice and smooth and nice and smooth. And you have this very, very comfortable grip. Thumb here with the uh, the, the jimping, that is the right grip. There is no where to choke up. So that's where you live. And this thing just feels magnificent. You can come up here a little bit. You don't want to come out of here because that swedge is a little bit on the sharp. Now, what I haven't said that's super important is this is a Ray Laconico design. I got to see this first at Blade Show, and I knew it was going to be a winner. Uh, it is, there's the number and the steel, and on this side, you have the Artisan logo. Again, Ray Laconico there, uh, and I just love a Laconico design. So, so great, guys, and I'm telling you, Ray thinks about ergonomics. Now, do you feel that clip? Yes, you do. Uh, is it a hot spot? Absolutely not. Uh, it feels great. And again, this is titanium, nice, thin titanium, really, really nicely done. Now, before we get on to some other things, let's go ahead and talk about specs. If I can get that, there we go. Nice and pretty there. I'm going to unplug, bring my laptop over here where I can see it. So this guy is 7.9 inches, so a great length. 4.49 close, so four and a half. Uh, blade length is 3.42, and you got a great sharpening choice. We'll go over that in a moment. S35, 0 0.106 on the blade thickness. Great stock, very, very thin and slicey. And guys, I cut, uh, I use this one to break down a bunch of boxes, and it is magnificent. You get down in there with that tip to your cut the tape, and it has a plenty big enough blade to sit there and slice cardboard, which we'll do in a minute. 59 to 61 HRC, produced by uh, Artisan in China, designed by Ray Laconico. Great flat, uh, uh, great flat grind on the blade. Did I talk about weight? Do they give me weight? They do not give me weight. Why do they not give me weight? So now I've got to get my scale out, guys. We're going to do that real quick so I can tell you what the weight is because a lot of you ask. I mean, it's not just a, it is light. Uh, I'm going to say, if I have to guess, 3.4 ounces, 3.2. Uh, very, very close. You can't see my scale, but just trust me. It says 3.2. Uh, so there are your specs. Now, we'll do our comparisons in just a moment, but just look at that milling, guys. This is a beautiful knife. It comes in this really cool tin as well, which I'm going to move out of the way for a moment. Actually, don't put it there because that'll block what we're about to do. So we will do our, I'm going to do the rat two on top here and the rat one on the bottom. Uh, and you can see the rat two is a little bit smaller blade and handle. The rat one is bigger blade and handle. Um, and there is your sandwich uh, there. So really, really cool. I just absolutely love this knife. And just because I always love doing this. Here is your pinion, which is just under eight inches, and they are very similar size-wise. Man, having my design on the same table as a Ray Laconico design does not seem right, but there you go. Uh, eventually, uh, maybe I can be, you know, even on the ladder that he stands on the top of. Uh, good luck. Um, but uh, really cool dude, too. I got to meet him at Blade Show and talk to him a little bit. Really nice. Just super nice guy. And he makes great designs. Sorry, I was wiping the blade. Um, really thin stock, as you can see. Just very, very thin. And that just makes it glide through. I mean, guys, I'm not kidding. It is like butter going through there. It just glides through. Easy peasy. I broke down a bunch of boxes. And it is still sharp, ready to roll. I just love this knife. Just a magnificent knife. Now... Uh, let's talk about a couple more things real quick. First of all, when it is closed, it is centered. Uh, again, action is wonderful. As you see, if I can get it back far enough where you can see it, just really, really good as far as it is running on bearings. And you can see it just whips open good detent or, you know, whatever it is in a button lock. It's not really a detent, but it's the same concept. Um, really, really nicely done. And the drop is really good. Um, and lock up when it is open. 
lock, I mean, rock solid, rock solid. Now, um, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is a button lock. And guys, I am not busting artisan's chops right now. I'm busting the entire knife community, the knife industry's chops. Please make a button lock without button stick. Um, let's see if you can hear it. Could you hear that? This one has a significant amount of button stick. Um, this is why I don't keep many button locks in my collection because I don't want, I, I don't mind a little tactile, but this is actually a very, I mean, I don't even know how to demonstrate it to you, but it takes quite a bit of force to push past that thud. I mean, it, it is... It is a lot of button stick. I have tried. Kevin left EDC. Talked to me about spinning the button. Um, did, no matter what I did. I've done a lot of things. I've cleaned the lock face um, as best I can. I mean, it still looks like there's some oil in there. Let me do it one more time. Just while we're doing the review here, I'm going to put my cloth down in there. And clean one more time. And just see. I'm cleaning as best I can right there where the lock engages. And in case you don't know what that looks like, there is the notch that that um, button sticks in right in there. And I'm just sticking this down in there and cleaning it as best I can just to see if that helps to make sure there's no oil. Yeah, same thing. I've done this numerous times. I haven't taken it apart because it's not my knife. Uh, there's just a world of button stick. Man, we are at 11 and a half minutes on this review. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start to wrap it up. But what a phenomenal, phenomenal design. And again, for the most part, carried out amazingly well uh, by Artisan. Just that one. And man, look at that, that satin finish. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife with just, like I said, one flaw I'm getting my fingerprints off again. One flaw that I'm just not great with, you know? I just wish we didn't have to, to have button stick on all these wonderful, beautiful knives uh, that we get to, to see. And that's that. So there's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. We're 12 minutes, which is much longer than a Knives Fast review it usually is, but had a lot to talk about. So thank you, Justin, over at White Mountain Knives. Thank you, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And thank you so much for watching the Knives Fast channel.